country. Once we do this thing, there's no going back. Meryl, Ronald, oh my God. Ronald, I, I am such a fan. I'm having a major geek moment right here. I'm such a thrill to meet you. I'm a huge Star Trek fan, science fiction fan, so this is a total thrill. And uh, thank you both for talking to me, Teddy, about season two of All for Mankind. For All okay. Mankind. Yeah, I'm nervous. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ron, let's uh, start. Uh, you know, the Cold War heats up on the moon this season, I understand. Yeah, it's uh, 1983, and uh, Reagan is president. And uh, the competition and the confrontation between the Soviet Union and the, and the United States has is, is gotten very hot, and it's expanded from Earth into low Earth orbit and also on the moon itself, where both powers have expanded uh, their footprint and much larger moon bases and mining operations. And so the Cold War is definitely a big part of the story in season two. And Meryl, the details of the series, uh, it just looks spectacular. I mean, it just looks so accurate. Uh, tell me about some of the advisors and maybe working with NASA to get all the details right for the show. Well, I mean, first of all, we have Garrett uh, Reisman, who was a former astronaut and amazing, and, and you might notice his little cameo in season two. Um, he always comes in and talks to us. He's a consultant for us, um, so that's been very helpful. And then also our production designer, um, Dan Bishop, who comes from the Mad Men world, is so detail-oriented in terms of, I mean, in first season, uh, Mission Control was pretty much the exact replica of the true mission control down to the tiles on the ceiling. He's so detailed. So, I mean, I think everyone across the board, and we have Denise and Mike Okuda, who are also also worked at Star Trek, um, who are also incredibly well-versed in this world. So I think across the board, we've had so many people that um, have helped make this show look as amazing as it does. And Ron, as a, as a writer and a creator, is it exciting for you to take something that's historically accurate and do what if? Because that's what this whole series is based on, that you can do this alternate reality and just the sky's the limit. Oh, yeah. It's one of the big thrills of doing the show. I mean, I love history and I love historical fiction. And so the chance to go to, to do something with a period that I know pretty well and that I was really interested in historically and play the what if game has really been a lot of fun. And Meryl, is it a sense of pride uh, in, the, in this show where one little boy or one little girl might have the inspiration to study science or to seek out the astronaut program just because of this series? I hope so. I mean, Ron and I have talked so much before about how astronauts used to be heroes and people used to want to grow up and be astronauts and how we've gotten away from that. So I hope so. I mean, when I watch a show, I don't even want to go to space. And still, I think being an astronaut looks so cool and something, you know, that if I was a kid, I think seems so exciting. And and to be able to portray that on TV and hopefully, as you said, um, inspire a little boy or a girl would be, I mean, amazing. And we're on in our final moments here. I'm Generation X, you know, so I grew up, uh, you know, drinking Tang and, and eating those space sticks from Pillsbury. <laughs> just somewhere in the show. Just have, you know, I've talked to real life astronauts. I've done interviews. They say they never took Tang to space. They had some orange bug <laughs> juice. They all hated Tang. But just for my curiosity, have Tang in the background or one of those Pillsbury sticks <laughs> for the next season. I think we'll we'll work on that. <laughs> well, I think we appreciate that. <laughs> well, congratulations on season two for all mankind. It's an incredible show, and uh, let's talk again soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.